All right, let's talk about. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for that. That's excellent. Um, I mean, we like I said, we've been building on this concept as we've gone along, right? And we, we've said this before that when we first started out, it was kind of like, yeah, shaders. What are they? What can you do with them? And now you know we're kind of up to this point where we're like, hey, look, here's some two D, two D shadow examples and things like that. So if you've been following along in the conversation, um, it will become more and more. Uh, I don't know if more and more easier. Is there a correct term? It'll become easier to uh, to kind of get what's going on here. So if you haven't, go back to youtube.com slash coronageek. Check out, I think, starting with maybe 150 or 149 or somewhere in there. Uh, we started talking about shaders, so go check that out. All right, Ed's making a face. His eyebrows are almost off of his forehead. Where, where, what Ed's are you doing? Ed's not making a face. Oh, it stopped. The thing froze. I love the way Google Hangouts. Oh. It always freezes at like that moment, you know, like the People Magazine moment. Can you see my camera? Yeah. Okay, I was uh, trying to share my screen. It's it it hangs sometimes when you yeah. share your screen. Let's that's the hang. It. That's the hang part of Hangout. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So today, <clears throat> what we're supposed to be talking about, uh, on my part, what I'm supposed to be talking about, is gravity and uh, using it in your games. And uh, as I will, I like to choose a game that we may or may not know, but a good game that can demonstrate the principle so we have something to talk to. Oh, just may I have to cough. Did you guys watch the review for this? Is this the, is this the one, Ed, that I had in the trailer, the review for this? Uh, this no, that was the Lonnie Dost review. That guy's that hilarious. My, uh, he's a young man who does makes his living doing... Uh, Game reviews. He's, he's, he's hilarious. He's funny. Very funny. He's funny, yeah. He, 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 it's all the same jokes after about a couple dozen videos, but, you know, he still does a good review of the game, so I still watch him. But uh, hopefully he's not going to watch this and go, well, I will never be reviewing your game now that you made fun of my jokes, but <laughs> good job. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, anyways, um, I did see this game on one of his review videos some time ago. And I was quite impressed because it's one of those games and you look at it and you see how it's played and you say, wow, one, I'm sure I could have made that. Two, why didn't I make that? Because now this guy's making a bundle of a dough and people are downloading it. For whatever your motivation is, you won't go into the monetization thing again. The evil word of the week, month, that is. The point is, is that I was impressed with this game. And then, um, interestingly, as I went along, I, I saw, oh, Version one, version two, version three. This game now has is has three versions. Uh, all of them use the same basic core mechanic. I should, I suppose, start the video <clears throat> before I look at my own stuff. So what this is is a game implementing localized gravity. And in the game, you're this little dude, and you run around and jump on these things, avoid the spikes, uh, avoid other active elements. You pick up gems, and then you jump in the mouth of this monster here and deliver the gems. So it's, it's kind of a funny ending to the whole thing. So what we're going to talk about today is the beginning of a re-implementation of this game in the sense that we are going to look at how to do localized gravity. Um, so I don't need to keep showing any of that. Let me just bring up... So like we did for uh, the game Zigzag Boom, I put together a little document that is going to be in the repository that you can download for this um, talk. Uh, and in this, uh, in the stuff that you get to download is a little uh, PDF where I go over the sort of like break down the game. I'm sorry, I've still got this cough. Well, well you know, you you made a, a template, uh, gear hopper or whatever, gear jumper, and uh, this kind of reminds me of that kind of stuff, being able to hop from thing to thing, but it's. I'm really interested in how we're going to walk around the edges of, of corners. Yeah, so I can uh, I can uh, compare this to that in a minute just to give you the differences, uh, some of the differences. But it's a similar in the con. I mean, we were talking about this before the show, but uh, you've seen if you've seen games for the past ten years, you've pretty much seen every mechanic under the sun. It's just a question of how people combine them and uh, spruce them up a little bit, make them a little more juicy, give them their own look and feel. But there's only so many things you can do. In this game, like I said, it's um, the pure, the basic mechanic is just you running around things and getting attracted to them and jumping from one block to the next. And so, in the game, they need to be fed, which is what we're going to make sort of a copy of. Uh, it's a platformer with dynamic gravity. That's it in a nutshell. 
Uh, the game ends when you touch a spike or some other thing that can kill you. Uh, or uh, if you deliver your gems to the hungry monsters at the end of the level. You earn points for delivering more gems. Um, one thing that's interesting that we'll get into later, not today, is the game implements a sub-level or level, uh, how, how would I say it? Probably sub-level, uh, checkpoints. So it's a game that progresses from level to level. Each level is tight and has a very small area in which you have to do your jumping and figuring out the puzzles. But uh, I think they realized that even then people got stuck because this is one of those games where you can just keep dying and then go back and play again. And so instead of having people start over from the beginning of a level every time, they have checkpoints. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't think I showed that. Let's see if the video is still playing. Here, here's one right there. So we're going to see this guy jumping. And this little doohickey right here, I don't know if you can see it. He's oh, no. going to run there. I think we're still seeing your summary. Can you see it? Uh, we're still seeing, I'm still seeing your uh, summary. I'm seeing a uh, video. So. Oh, you're seeing a video. Okay, keep, okay, go ahead. Okay. So he's going to run around here, and we see that the little dot filled in. That means that that checkpoint has been set. Now, if he dies by jumping on these spikes on the right side, he'll restart at the checkpoint. Oh, thank you for explaining that, because I didn't know what that was. I played it, but I was like, oh, I got the little dot. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, you know, you don't know what it is until you need it, and you're like, oh, cool, I don't have to go all the way back. So uh, we're not going to implement that this week, but we'll definitely do it in a future show, Hangout, because um, this week what I really want to focus on is uh, just the core mechanic, which is the gravity, localized gravity, but i got to run you through some of the other details so it kind of makes sense. So what else is in here? Uh, like I said, sequentially connected levels, it's just a level-to-level -level thing, you level one, level two and the checkpoints, so you don't have to do them all. Long list of mechanics, we're not going to go over it all, but basically it's a little dude who can run around left and right, and he can jump. He stays oriented to his current uh, gravity source, so his feet stay pointed at whatever he's attracted to. Um, what else? Whoops. Uh, the world. Non-parallax, it's a simple background. It's one, one layer, it doesn't have multiple layers. Although I think parallax would make a nice, interesting uh, addition to the whole moving, right? I mean, just having things kind of slide as you slide. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to make a game like this, but then give it your own look and feel, you could. You could add parallax and uh, give it a little more depth concept or feeling. Right. Uh, the level's made up of things like circles and squirrels, basic sh squirrels, <laughs> squares, <laughs> <laughs> basic shapes. Uh, which is another thing that I thought was brilliant when I first saw the game. I'm like, this guy just took basic shapes and he made them sexy. Gave them little feels and movements and things, cool things they do. Uh, spikes and other stationary threats. And then there's turrets that you would see if you play the game a little bit further uh, that shoot uh, missiles at you. Another thing is, is um, I'm taking and sort of like uh, mashing together all three games because I've seen them all and I kind of forget which one's which. So if you play some of the earlier versions of this game, you'd be like, hey, I don't see any missiles in here. Maybe there were no missiles in one, but I know that in one of the three games that there are missiles. Uh, monsters, that changes from game to game. The first game, it's monsters. I think the second game, it's like these plants that you have to climb to deliver, but they're monsters. Uh, the checkpoints we talked about and gems. Hey, Ed. Um... Yeah. As you were talking, I was thinking about uh, you're talking about these basic shapes, these squares, circles, things like that. Um, I don't think that it happens, but when the character jumps from shape to shape, uh, it would be kind of interesting. I'm not saying we have to do it for the example here, but as an exercise for the listener, if they w wanted to make the shapes um, sort of pulsate or shake when the character goes from shape to shape, I think that would be a nice little addition too, right? So yeah, give it sort of an organic okay. feel. talking about there's a mechanic in here when you jump on the circular shapes and maybe mm. some of the other ones where they bobble a little bit, like when yeah. they move, and then when you jump off they move, to give you this juicy feeling of they're springy. Yeah, yeah. it, it seems like that's a, that's a missing piece from a lot of games is just to go, sort of give it more of an organic feel. Right, yeah. I really like that, uh, you know, the whole juicy topic uh, concept came out of a talk several years back. But it re I really identified it with it because the guys, when they said it, as soon as I heard Juicy, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly the description of all that extra stuff that you do to make the, ge uh, the game more visceral, to make it the, sort of like engage the user. Is that the talk where, where the guy took the exact same game he started off with? He's like, hey, here's the, it's a platform shooter, and then, and then yeah. he went through and yeah. added all these different uh, pieces Lime to beer. it. 
Yeah, and then and then by the end you're like you're like that's an awesome game, but it was the same game he started. It was the same game, game, exactly right. He started. He, I think there were two different versions of this talk. One version they did with a game like Breakout, and another version they did with a platformer. But this the concept was the same. They took a very boring game, and then they started to add little extra bits to it using their rule set of add this, do that, make the guns bigger, more bullets, make the world shake, make the camera shake. Uh, make the bullets stick around, stuff like that, and you're like, that game went from really super boring to where can I get it? Right. Yeah. And it's still the same game. Yeah. 